Hello, thank you for joining the SAGE 300 training video. This video will explore commonly run reports in the General Ledger module. For this training session, we will be working in Sample Company. Let's start by taking a look at some batch related reports. We will begin by going to General Ledger, GL Transactions, and our batch list. These first two reports that we're going to show build off our prior training session on journal entries. The first report we're going to look at is a batch listing report. It will show the details of the batch that we have previously entered. To run the report, highlight the batch in the GL batch list and hit print. If you want, you can enter more than one batch in the range screen but the screen defaults to the batch selected. Go ahead and hit the print button. This report will show several pieces of information. It will show the batch number and the description of it. In this case, this is an error batch generated from a prior batch. The batch creation date, the entry number, and the details of the journal entry. If there are multiple journal entries, each one will be subtotaled at the bottom, and then eventually at the grand, at the very bottom, there will be a grand total of the batch. In this case, these are the same since there's only one entry in this batch. Like most reports in Sage 300, this is a crystal report, and you can export it to a PDF or Excel or any one of these other options. Or you can print it to a piece of paper if you'd like. Okay, we're going to close this and take a look at another entry, another report. We notice that this batch is an error batch. So let's go to the error batch, which is this prior one here. And if we scroll over here to the right, we can see that there's these there is a column called number of errors, and there's a number in here that's not zero. If you double click on that, you will get the posting journal reports and it will default to the posting journal errors and the appropriate posting sequence for that batch. You can then hit the print button and you will get a message as to what the error was that caused the batch to fail. In this case, it is to a locked fiscal period. To remedy it in this particular case, you would simply unlock the fiscal period and post the batch or change your batch date. Okay, let's go on and look at a few other reports in Sage 300 General Ledger. We'll go to the reports folder and the first report we're going to look at is the chart of accounts report. Sometimes you need a report that lists all your GL accounts, and that's what this report is for. There are a couple options here, long form, short form, allocation, control account, subledgers, but the common ones that people most frequently use are just the simple short form, which is our default. You can, if you like, want, sort it by different values, maybe a certain segment code or the account number, you can say, I'm going to put a range in for a particular account number. And if I expand this here, I can also filter by some of the different segments in my GL accounts. If I hit print without editing anything, I will get my full chart of accounts. I'm going to hit print. And it gives me a report. And it shows here the account number and the description. It provides some other information, whether the account is active or not, the type of account, uh, including a balance sheet versus income statement. If we come here to the last page, we'll see that the first letter is an I for income statement, whereas the beginning ones, the value here is a B for balance sheet. If you go over to the retained earnings, you'll see an R for retained earnings. You'll see whether it is a natural debit or credit balance and uh, a currency configuration. Whether it posts in detail, what the structure code is, and then some additional information in here in terms of does it allow 
um, is it a control account, is it an allocation, or is quantity allowed? Moving on to our next report is the trial balance. Okay, we have uh, several options here that are important to note. The first one being the report format. We, the default is a report. We also have a worksheet version, but we can also pull provisional. And so if you are trying to run a report based on provisional posting, you might want to run the provisional separate report. And I'll just print this. I don't have any provisional entries posted at the moment, but you can see the layout of it here where I have the account number, the description, my posted debits and credits. Then I would have a column here that shows any provisional posting and what the balance will be um, with that provisional batch or batches taken into effect. So you can see the impact of the entries you are proposing to make. Most commonly though, we use just the report, which will include just the posted entries. And in the print type, I have two options here, balances as of a year and period and net changes for the period. I'm gonna run balances for the year and period and I'm going to run this for last calendar year. So by clicking on the calendar icon here, I do get a nice little calendar view showing all my fiscal periods for the year. And I'm going to select the last fiscal period for the prior year, which is 2023. And I'm going to hit the print button. And I get a fairly standard trial balance report indicating the account number, the description, and then the debit or the credit balance sitting in that account. And if I navigate through the pages, um, I will eventually get to, you know, here's my retained earnings. And then I get to my various income statement accounts and whether, you know, there's a credit balance or a debit balance in that account. And I get my net income or loss for the year down here at the bottom. Sometimes, however, you want to see for a very specific uh, year uh, period or maybe a quarter or some kind of interval like that. And in which case you want the net changes for the period and then you get a range that you can enter in here. And so I can say, I want to get it for Q4 of last year. And when I hit print, I get a format fairly similar to what we looked at a minute ago in the uh, provisional posting uh, version, where I get the account number, the description, my opening balance, debits or credits, and then the net changes for the periods I selected and then what the ending balance is over here. So you can see all the differences through the system. Please remember that if it is negative, it's going to be a credit balance change. Um, maybe even easier to see here in the depreciation where we had, um, it's a natural credit balance. We had a balance of 6,300. We had a credit transaction for a thousand and now we're at $631,000. And at the bottom, we can see that our net changes total out to zero, which is good since we're running it for everything. Our debits should equal our credits and our net changes should be zero. However, one of the things that we can do is further restrict this to uh, some values in here. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And I might say from account group and grab um, my revenue account here and say, we're going to go from 15 to the very end. Remember that ZZZZ to the, is, means uh, to the end, whereas blank means start at the very beginning. So we're starting here at 15 and going to the end. I'm then going to hit the print button. And now notice I only have my income statement accounts here. All my sales, my cost of goods sold, and my various expense accounts and my net changes does not equal zero. I have a credit balance of $1,563 and my net income magically is that exact amount, which it should be since I'm pulling just my income statement accounts. A couple other functions in here that might be useful um, include accounts with no activity. If you do that, 
you will get a report that shows a lot more accounts. Please notice now we're on seven pages instead of two, and I'm seeing all my accounts, even the ones that have no activity in them. Um, that is sometimes useful if you're trying to run certain reports or, or design things in certain ways, um, just to validate that, hey, you know, in this case, there were no commissions. Again, I can filter my reports to a certain range of accounts. So maybe I want to look at a particular division. And now I only have GL accounts where the division equals 100. And because I still have that include in active accounts, I'm still seeing all of those. The final report that we're going to look at is the transaction listing report. Again, a similar screen. We have the ability to sort by account number, segment, or account group. We have a range of GL accounts that we want to look at. We can enter a year and period. I am going to enter just period 12 of 2023. I can include accounts with no activity or I can include my quantities. I have my filters for my different GL account segments and my account group range filter. And by hitting print, I can get my report. Here I'm seeing, you know, all these GL accounts that met the criteria, what their balance was, but there was no activity in them. If, however, I go to the last page, I start to see here's an entry that we did earlier and I can see here is my year, my period based right off the header there, the source document type, the posting sequence, my batch entry number, my date, my description and reference. And in this case, it was a debit in the transaction. And my beginning balance here was $2, uh, and seven cents credit, we debited $1,000. So my ending balance is 997.93. And if I continue through, I can see here's the opposite half of that transaction. There's my credit. And that may be the only entry, in fact, it is that I have in December in my sample data. If I want, I can go to a prior year. Let's go back here and sample company, and let's pick like say April of 2020 to May of 2020. I think there's some sample data in there. And we can start to see uh, a little bit more what that might look like in a more active environment. I'm seeing here my beginning balance, the individual entries, the net change for the month. And then and since this is multi-period, I got some more entries, the net change for the month, the ending balance, and then of course, my overall statistics for the time duration selected. So as you can see, this can be quite a useful report. This concludes this Sage 300 tutorial on common general ledger reports. There are of course, other reports available, but our focus in this session was to look at the most commonly used reports in the general ledger module. Thank you for watching and have a great day.